The Faith and Fire with Megan Fortner podcast aims to light a fire that not only sheds light on who you are, what you have, and what you can do because you choose Christ, but also spreads as a contagious spirit of faith that has to be caught. We want you to live the life God has for you and for you to receive all that awaits you. Megan's goal is to use Facebook Live conversations and testimony each week to teach you to grow in faith, hope, love, and authority while stoking your fire to fight the fight of faith. Welcome to the Faith and Fire podcast with Megan Fortner. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Faith and Fire with Megan. I'm super excited and pumped to be here with you today. It's like it's been for that way. It seems like it's been forever. And I want to make a funny here because I'm just a funny type of person. I've got this lip gloss. There's like a lip plumper on. I don't know. I just decided to try it because I felt good today. Hallelujah. But I just wanted to come to you real quick before we get my special guest, Pastor Delton, on here. I'm super excited, y'all. I love his fire. I love his personality. Um, I'll explain how we met and all that later, but I try to come on a little bit early so I can give you what God's given me to talk about so I don't take any of his time. Amen? Because his time is his time. But the word that God has been brewing in my heart today was Acts 3.16, and I'm going to read it out of the Passion Translation, and it says, Acts 3.16, Faith in Jesus' name has healed this man standing before you. It is faith that comes through believing in Jesus' name that has made the crippled man walk right in front of your eyes. It is faith in Jesus. It is faith in the word of God. It is unwavering faith that stands on the scriptures that knows you are healed. It is faith in Jesus' name. It is faith in speaking that makes mountains move. It makes the storm calm down. It makes the whole environment and situation just calm down because you have faith to believe the word of God. You have faith to believe what God has given you in his word to stand on. Amen. But for some reason, I know I know there's a lot of people out there that are wanting healing. I've been praying and asking for healing. And I mean, I watch it on other people's lives. I see, please pray for my, please pray for my healing. Please pray for, you know, my son or my grandson or whatever. I have seen it multiple times that people are like, please pray for. I'm telling you right now, I'm in agreement with your healing. I'm in agreement with your son's healing. I'm in agreement with your grandchild's healing. I'm in agreement for whatever healing that you need. But I just know that this scripture is for somebody that's tuning in now or going to tune in later. And it says in Acts 3.16, the Passion Translation, faith in Jesus' name has healed this man. He said, what faith in Jesus' name has healed this man? Number one, we know that we have healing because by Jesus' stripes, we were healed. That means you already are, so we know we have it. And then it just sits here and says, here's the other ingredient to it. You know you have it, but here's the ingredient. Faith in Jesus' name has healed this man standing before you. It is the faith that comes through believing, speaking, receiving your healing through the name of Jesus that has made this crippled man walk right in front of your very eyes. Glory be to God. My question is, do you have the faith to receive your healing today? Do you have the faith to stand on the word of God when you start to hurt? You say, no, I have healing. I have my healing. I believe it. I receive it. Do you have the faith to walk in action in the healing that you have already received? Do you have faith to move the soreness, the sickness out? Do you have faith to cast it out? Tell it never to rear its ugly head. And if it does, you're going to cast it out again. Do you have faith to stand without wavering that you will receive your healing, that you will receive the answers, that you will receive the promises that God has spoken to you? When God speaks to you, write it down, write it down, because I have, can go through my prayer journals and see things that God has told me has come to pass. I, I have seen it. I have witnessed it with my very eyes and I've witnessed it through other people that have told me. God showed me this. God told me this. It has come to pass. And then when it comes to pass, we want to shout and scream about it, which we should. We should be screaming from the rooftops, telling everybody what God has done in our life. Hallelujah. God is so good. He is so faithful. And his word is truth. 
when you stand on the word and you speak the word, my pastor, my dad in faith, Pastor Mark Hankins always says, God makes himself responsible for your results. And he does. When we stand on the word and we speak the word and we just, just stand, don't waver from it. Don't take your eye from the promise. When God gives you a promise, write it down, put it on the doorpost, put it on your mirror, put it in your, on your purse, put it wherever you know that your eyes will see it right as soon as you get up. Sometimes it may be right there on your bedpost. Just so you know the promise that God has spoken to you because you know the devil's going to rear its head around any corner, every corner, anywhere. He's going to try to pop up and say, nope, that promise isn't going to happen. And then you say, yep, the word says, the word says. That's what Jesus said to the devil. The wor- It is written. It is written. The word says, come on, it's time to rise up and use the word. Come on, it's time to rise up in any situation, any circumstance, anything. You use the word. I said this not too long ago. Flip the script on the devil. He's going to tell you everything that you're not. He's going to tell you everything that you're not going to get. He's going to tell you that you're worthless. He's going to tell you that you're not getting it this time. He's going to tell you that your healing's not coming. He's going to tell you that, you know, the word that God gave you is not true. He's going to tell you all of these things. So you flip the script and you tell him what the word says. You tell him, I am going to get it this this time. I am more than a conqueror. I have already received my healing. I know I'm walking in that. I'm getting it. I'm re- I received it. I'm already going to have it. And I know that I'm going to see it manifest in my life. Come on, somebody. Do you have the faith to stand on the word of God when it feels like it isn't working, when it seems like it isn't working, when it looks like it isn't working, when it tastes like it isn't working, when it smells like it isn't working? Come on. Do you have the faith to say what the word says against anything else that comes, senses, anything? Do you have the faith to say that I've received it already? Because when you say, this is mine, that's my promise, you've already received it. So then when it manifests, when it comes and manifests and drops right in your lap, you can say, ha ha, I've already received it, but boy, I received it now. Hallelujah. And you can run around and say, yes, I already received it when I accepted it, but I got it now. I got it. I got it. I got it. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. That's for somebody. Acts 3.16. Do you have the faith to receive and everything that God's told you is yours? Do you have the faith to receive it? Are you going to speak it even if it doesn't look like it? Come on, because the devil works here in the senses. He looks in the scene. He works in your emotions. He works in your mind. He tries to bring all kinds of things against you. When you know it's the devil, you can say, hold up, wait a minute. I don't receive this. I'm going to have a praise minute. Because in my praise minute is when all the glory falls around my praise minute. That all of heaven is doing its most serious business. Come on. That's what Pastor Mark and Pastor Trina says. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, I see Delton has dropped on here. Let's see if we can get him on, y'all. Sorry, I'm on fire. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I hope y'all are fired up for today. Glory to God. Pastor Delton, are you on a phone or on a computer? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Right now, if you are watching, I want you just to say hallelujah. I want you to lift your voice right now. I don't care where you're at. I don't care how crazy people think you are. We have a spirit of faith, and the spirit of faith is not normal. Come on. Just say hallelujah. Praise God. Glory to God. I have it. I have it now. I'll have it then. I had it back then. I got it now. Come on. I have it. I have the spirit of faith. I have what I'm believing for. I'm going to walk into what God has for me. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It says that, there we go. Here we come on. Here we go. Let's go. Let's go. Glory to God. He's coming. Hallelujah. Praise God. Whoo! Come on, y'all. Whoa. Hey. 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 What's Praise up? the Lord. <laughs> how are you? Good. How are you doing? I am blessed and highly faithful. Amen. And praise the Lord. Well, this is my dear friend, Delton, right? Am I saying it right? Right. Well, let me tell a little funny real quick. So Quincy Burt is my guy that does my podcast and everything. And I kept saying Quincy Bart. And he's like, hey, girl, um, that's not my last name. So <laughs> I want to make sure I'm saying it right. right. Lord. Right. So uh, Pastor Delton, I met him at Pastor Mark's meeting. Um, I was actually working at the book table. We'd kind of seen each other on Facebook. And then we met and it was just like a flame of fire. And I was like, yeah, this man's got it. He's got it. So I am going to let him introduce himself. I want him to um, 
Let's pray real quick first. All right. Pray. Can we do that? All right. Dear God. Dear God, I just thank you so much for everything yeah. that you're doing. I thank you for thank the mighty you, moves that you are about yes. to do. Lord. I thank you for the mighty rushing wind that's blowing from the east to the west. The north yes, to Lord. Come. It's coming. Yes, There's it. nothing anybody can do. They have to jump in it because yes, they're like, Lord. what is this? They they think about it, but God, you show up mightily in every thank you, Lord. God, I just pray the blood of Jesus over this message. I pray that the word that Pastor Delton speaks just pierces through the very heart, through bone and marrow like a sword. It just pierces through it, Lord. I pray that every word that is spoken today be led by yes. you. You have Lord. our mouth. Lord, you have our thoughts, Lord. Thank you you show up mightily. Yes. I pray if there's anybody listening today that has a need, I pray you show up hungry and expecting to receive your answer and your need. Because I know that what Pastor Delton is going to share today thank is you, mighty Lord. and powerful, and it's going to break some chains. Come on. And I thank you, God, for the power that you've given us in the same spirit of faith. Thank you, and spirit I just pray of faith. that anybody who is listening today that does not know Jesus, yes. I pray over you right now, and I just pray you reach out to one of us after this message. Because we want to tell you all about our daddy God. And I just thank you, God, for this time. We do not take it lightly. This is your time. Have your way. And I just bind the devil's attacks yeah. and sit, charge angels yeah. around about it. And we say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. Lord, Lord. Praise I'm the Lord. Lord. I'm giving you the floor. You can all right. uh, say a little bit about yourself and then just go right into all right. God's got for you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, uh, Sister Megan. To God be all the glory. Well, I've been saved, serving God since 1996. Glory to God. Started when I was 16 years old. Uh, started when I was 16. I was a 13-year-old kid, and I had long hair, and I was uh, I knew everything, and uh, I was wild. I was on drugs. I was on all kinds of drugs, and I was really deep in darkness, and... uh. 16 year old kid jesus christ the power of god came to my kitchen and changed me supernaturally uh never asked for it never wanted it never wanted to be a preacher never wanted to be in ministry uh, i was one of the rebellious kids that thought they knew everything i had long hair down to my shoulders i had dreadlocks i looked like a snoot d-o-double g you know <laughs> i was thugging Weed, marijuana, crystal meth, LSD, acid. I mean, I I was between twenty a thug and a hippie, and uh, the power of God. I never knew the power of God. I mean, I knew going to church. Uh, my mom and dad raised me very well in a Christian home. They raised me well, but I never knew the power of the gospel. I knew religion. I knew the form of godliness. But as a 16, my mama, this whole time, me and Pastor Mark Hankins got something in, in common. Our mamas. My yeah. mama was the, was, the, was the Holy Ghost preacher in my house. She was the one that would always preach to me and say, Delton, you're going to be a preacher. You're going to be a man of God. I'm like, Mama, I ain't going to do that, Mama. I'm not going to be no preacher and i'm not gonna be a tongue talker i don't i don't believe it. i'll walk around and make fun of her be, 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 you know but my mama always said you know i thought she was out there in la la land you know but you know she knew what god gave her and she said i saw it in a dream that you're going to be a preacher and she said you're going to be a holy ghost i said mama i don't, I don't even believe in the holy ghost I don't believe in speaking in tongues. I don't believe in y'all dancing and falling out. And, you know, I was, I went to the Baptist church, but then I went to my mom's church, the Assembly of God. I thought it was all crazy. I mean, they were running around, shouting, dancing. I said, Mama, y'all wild, man. But as a 16 year old kid, I was sitting in my kitchen with long hair, with a Marilyn Manson t shirt on and cigarettes in my pocket. And the power of God, I said the power of God, Megan. Not, not talking about no AA program, no steps to a better way, no life coach, no counselor. It was Jesus. Come on now. It was the counselor. It was the power of God came in my kitchen. I never knew the power of God, never felt the power of God. 
in the power of God, I, it, it hit me like you turn a mighty rushing wind. <laughs> yeah. A mighty rushing wind came in my kitchen, knocked me in the floor. Nobody caught me. Nobody put a blanket over me. Nobody put a towel over me. Come on. God yeah. super hit my natural. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Come on. It was the power of God. Paul said the power of God is the gospel. The gospel contains the power of God. It's the dunamis of God. It's the glory of God. And it hit me as a 16-year-old kid, and I fell out in the middle of the kitchen floor, and, and my whole life was changed. I mean, everything inside of me, my identity, my shackles and my chains and what I used to do with my self-esteem and my, my, my issues, the power of God hit me. And I remember coming out of the floor and saying, Mama, this real. Yeah. It's real. This is real. My dad came in and said, what's happened to my son? And my, my mom said, he's getting saved. He's getting saved. It was so supernatural. Man. I don't remember the time. I don't remember the month. I don't remember the day. I just know that I was a sinner, right? Yeah. I was lost on my way to hell. Come on now. Yeah. And the power of God. And this is what we need in the church today. No more bingo and bank sales and programs and potlucks. Man, the power of God, yeah. the, the dunamis power, it hit me. And it changed. I did every drug. I did the strongest drugs to the weakest drugs. I knew about getting high. But man, when the power of God hit me again, I said, Mama, it ain't nothing like this. I mean, this is some good stuff, man. Yeah. I can get, and it's legal. I mean, I can get... I can get in possession with the intent to distribute, man. I'm a distributor. So I was a 16-year-old kid laying up and don't know the Bible, don't know any Bible verses. And the power of God hit me. Three hours, I'm in the floor. I'm crying. I'm repenting. I'm praying. I'm asking God to forgive me. I'm speaking in tongues. And I didn't even believe in speaking in tongues. I don't have no clue about this stuff. The supernatural, just like Paul I knocked off the horse on the road to Damascus. I had an encounter. I believe that Jesus was in that room. I didn't see him physically, but spiritually, I saw him. And I went to school, totally changed. The school went crazy. They said, well, he's on some kind of dope. He's on some kind of mushroom. It won't last very long. You know, Delta, he, he'll never be nothing. He'll always be a drug head. He'll always be, he'll be in jail. He'll be in the penitentiary. But it's been 27 years since I have, I've been drug free. I've been drug free 27 years, preaching the gospel 27 years, alcohol free, tobacco free. Everything has been changed. And I've been free. And I don't know why Megan did, God did what he did. I'm still chasing Jesus right now. Still trying to figure out. Well, I'm like Paul. I have not apprehended it. But what's one thing I do? Come on now. I'm pressing toward the mark of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. Come on. So I have been preaching the gospel this year, 27 years. I have preached in every denomination. I have preached in jails and schools on TV, on platforms, at Walmart, in the dollar store, at the liquor store, at the crack house, at the white house, at any church house. Man, the gospel, it is the power of God. It is the dynamis power of God. It is a revolutionary revelation that Jesus Christ is Lord. So as a 16-year-old kid, I didn't know how to read the Bible. I didn't know what to do. So a man gave me a book by Kenneth E. Hagemald, the authority of the believer. And in that book, there's Paul's prayers. Yeah. Ephesians 1 prayer, Ephesians 3 prayer. That's where Paul said, I pray that God, you would give me the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God, that the eyes of my understanding, don't give me a start preaching, will be the only one they know the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance, not just the preacher, but to the saint. Come on now. You got saints and then you get ain't and what is exceedingly greatness of his power toward us who believe which he walked in christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his right hand 
far, Megan, far. Come on, man, far. But all principalities and pine, big devil, small devil, fat devil, bald headed devil, hairy devil, everything has been put under our feet. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, wherewith he has loved us, even who is dead in sins, has saved us, brought us up raise us up and set us at the right hand of God, raised us in heavenly places in where? In Christ Jesus. So these prayers I've started praying. Uh, now I'm praying that God would grant me according to the power that I will be strengthened with all might according to his power to know the love of Christ which passes all knowledge. That I will be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we ask or think according to those. So these prayers I started praying as a teenage boy in my bedroom. <laughs> People were going to play Xbox and basketball or football. I'll come home from school and get in my room for hours. My belong, boy, where's my son at? I couldn't find him in my room. I'm asking God, God, give me the spirit of wisdom. Come on, in a revelation, in the knowledge of God, so I can know you better, see you clearer. So I didn't understand how to study the scripture. Then Brother Hagin said, go through Paul's letters and honor like every time you see in Christ, in him or in whom. So I went through the Paul's letters and I just underlined everywhere you see in Christ. That's where I'm at. Come yeah. on, yeah. I'm not a recovering drug addict. Yeah. I'm not what I used to That's be. Right. I'm a new creature. Yeah. Come on, I'm a new species of being. I have a new nature. Come on, I know who the baby's daddy is. It's Jesus Christ. I ain't got to go to the Maury show and figure out who the baby's daddy is. I ain't got to call Ancestor.com. I know what runs in my family. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Come on now. So these prayers have been special to me. So I went through, I underlined every time I see these words in Christ, in him or in whom or in the Lord. And that's who we are in Christ. Yeah. That's what we are carrying. Come on now. The devil don't like it because you're carrying something. <laughs> you know, when you're carrying some power and carrying some revelation, I mean, not just the preacher, not just the prophet, not just the pastor, every single believer, my God, if the devil can deceive you, he can defeat you. He even tried with Jesus. Yeah. Jesus said, I don't know who I am, baby. It is written. So you have to know who you are in Christ. Because when you are in Christ, you're not in crisis. Come home now. You are an overcomer. And this just runs through your family. So I begin to ask God, Lord, I need, this is what I need. As a 16, 17-year-old kid, and I'm still, almost 43, still praying these prayers. Lord, we need, come on, church, yes. wisdom is the principal thing. Yes. In all you're getting, get it understanding. So uh, Paul's letters, Pastor Mark says, is an x-ray. Come on now. And that shows you what happened in Christ. You know, when a woman gets pregnant, what she do? Gets an ultrasound. And that shows you what life she's carrying. My God from on high. Man, if you don't understand the life that's inside of you, eternal life, the Zoe life, the God kind of life, the overcoming life, the love life that you are carrying, man, you are equipped with the Holy Ghost, filled up full of the Holy Ghost. Wear the whole armor of God. So knowing who you are is your true identity, Brother Hagin said, is the highest kind of faith. And that's what I want. I want to know him, Paul said, and in the power of his resurrection and in the fellowship of his suffering. So I had an unusual experience. I mean, people say, how'd you get saved? I'm like, well, it's the interesting story. I mean, it was in my kitchen. I mean, every time I go to the kitchen, I get happy. I'm like, this is where I got saved, man, in my kitchen. And I don't know why God, he saved my life, man, because I was going to hell. I mean, police was chasing me. I mean, I was carrying drugs. I mean, I could have been in prison or jail. I mean, I could be dead. I could have yeah. overdosed on mushrooms or LSD. Or I was in, I was in mega, I was in, in the witchcraft and, and like like hard, heavy metal music, like Guns N' Roses and Pantera and all this 
dark stuff. And now at 17 years old, uh, a Christian uh, TV station wanted to know, they wanted to interview me, and they wanted to know how I got off rock and roll music. I'm out of Ozzy Osbourne. You remember the names? All yeah. these people I was, I'm talking about in their deep. And they want to know how I got off of this rock and roll music and how it influenced our generation. And 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 I hope young people are really listening to me because uh, music will influence you. Because Paul said faith comes by hearing and by hearing by what? The word of God. So if faith comes by hearing, how does fear come? Right. How does depression come? Yeah. How does how does how does it come? Well come by hearing. Yeah. So I was influenced. I think that's was what one of the things that turned me into a rebellious kid, not just, you know, you know, wrong associations, of course, wrong friends, but the music I listened to. I mean, what I what I put inside me. I mean, I listened to hard, nasty, dark music. I mean, Marilyn Manson was one of my favorite, Nirvana, Kurt Cobain. I I, I mean, I was deep, I had every CD, I had every t shirt. I mean, that was inside me, and that had demonic activity, and it got inside of me. And uh, Christ has brought me out of darkness. So I'm out of the Adam's family. <laughs> now I'm in Christ. Now I'm made whole. And I never knew who I was as a young kid, so I was looking, you know, Megan, for love, you know, which is all I'm saying, all the wrong places. I was trying to fit in with the crowd at school. Young people these days are trying to do the same thing. And now music has done got really crazy. I mean, I don't know what it is now. I mean, I listen to Christian. I, mean, I don't know what it is now. But, you know, I listen to rap and, you know, Bone Thugs of Harmony and Tupac and Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre. That's back in the 90s now. You know, now it's all changed. Now you got 10 Chain, 4 Chain, 5 Chain. I don't know what's up now. But now, you know, that, that stuff influenced me as a young person. It, it got me rebellious. It got me... Uh, the depressed, they got me. I mean, really, in here in darkness and drugs is a form of witchcraft. It's a form of antidepressant. And I was smoking weed. I was hanging out with the thugs and the homies. I was trying to fit in, right. but I never fit in because God didn't call me to fit in. Right. Because God chose yeah. me. I didn't. I didn't choose myself. Right. I didn't want to do this. Right. <laughs> I was finally getting high. <laughs> I'm okay. I was okay. Chasing women and living the life I was living. Yeah. But really, I wasn't okay. I was lost. I was undone. I was in sin. But the only one that brought me out was not religion. It wasn't church. It wasn't a denomination. It was Jesus. I said his name, church. I said Jesus. Yeah. Jesus, the Holy Ghost is one that came in my kitchen and brought me out. And I have not stopped, and I will never stop. I mean, he will tell you something. And I will never stop preaching the gospel. I've been to small churches, big churches. I've never asked for an offering. I don't beg for money. Right. I, I preach like it is, and I go home. Come on now. Yeah. And if they hear they do, they don't, I'll be okay. Yeah. Because God called me to do this. I didn't. I, this is something I didn't sign up for. It. You know, God called me. And I feel like if God calls you, he will equip you and he will anoint you and he'll provide for you. There's always provision in the vision. Yeah. If God given you a vision, there will be provision in the vision because it's his vision. Amen. Yeah. So that's me. I'm wild. I'm on fire. I love God. Yeah. I preach anywhere I go. This is the, this live stuff is new to me. You know, I'm not new with this Facebook live. <laughs> so I'm still learning this technology. You I just get you. you. If you just give me a preach a microphone and a Bible, I mean, I'm right at home, baby. I'm old school, holy good Pentecostal preacher. Come on now. But this, this Zoom and uh, this is all new to me, baby. I, I, I really just short bus going to school, you know. I'm, I don't know. But I thank God today for the Holy Ghost. Man, he is the mighty one. If we listen to him, he will make you look smart. And we know we're not smart. We're not educated enough. That's why Paul said, my faith today is in the power of God, not in human wisdom or technology, but man, it is in the power of God. The power of God can do more in five seconds than we can do in five minutes. He can walk and chew gum at the same time. God can take care in Canada, take care in Africa, take care in Monticello, Arkansas, take care of Missouri, all at one time. Man, when the Lord turned our captivity 
feel it like a dream. Yeah. Hands on mouth, feel with laughter. Come on now. Our tongue is singing. Then the heathen said, the Lord hath done great things for them. Great things for us. Therefore, we are glad. So there is joy in the Holy Ghost. The kingdom of God is not meat or drink, but it's righteousness, peace, and what? Joy in the Holy Ghost. Man, there's something about this atmosphere of joy that God can arrange things supernaturally. Man, serious business occur in the atmosphere of joy. When you lift up your voice like the trumpet, and like James said, count it all joy or maximum joy. It may not be joy, Brother Hagin said, but he said, just count it joy until it is joy. So just rejoice and laugh at the devil. Come on now. So laugh at situations. As you're rejoicing here, something's going on in your future. While I was rejoicing, come on now, while I was laughing and while I was praising God, come on now, something in the unseen is greater than the seen. Something is happening. Listen, if you doubt, you will go it out. If you complain, you will remain. If you praise, oh, you will be raised. Something happens to you. Come on now. Man, God is going to have strength to come out of your mouth. The Spirit of Jesus, I believe, but therefore I speak. I hook up my speaker to my believer. I just say what I believe. I need to pray and beg and struggle. And I come to God boldly in the time of need. I know who my father is. I just say, whosoever shall have whatsoever he says. So we can say something. Something can be said. We can praise God. Listen, the devil don't want you to say nothing. He don't mind you to believe in God, but he just wants you to be quiet about it. But you don't have the right to remain silent. Come on now. You really can't be quiet. Jeremiah said, it's like fire shut up in my bones, man. Something happens. The word is alive. It's a fire. Some people read the Bible and fall asleep. But some people read the Bible and can't sleep. I mean, something happens on the inside of you. Your spirit is like a lit it's candle. You can jump over a troop, leap over a wall, change the enemies down. You can kill a lion, kill a bear, kill a goat, kill whoever comes in your way. Because it's not by might or by power, but only by the Holy Ghost. Man, when his super gets so you going natural, you can move a mountain. You can kill a giant. You can do anything. You can prosper in the worst times in this world when the blessing of the Lord is on you. It makes you rich, the Bible says. And it's no sorrow with it. Praise the Lord. So that's just me. I'm a country boy, and I love Jesus. And I live in southeast Arkansas. And I preach wherever, whenever they invite me. Yeah. He was like, well, will you come into my church when he invites me? Praise the Lord. And I'm just wild. Yeah. And I preach to young people, old people. It really don't matter. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Glory Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what I love about, uh, you know, we have the same spirit of faith. And um, I know that's why God connected us because I'm the exact same way. You know, I'll go anywhere. I'll go. Right. wherever anybody wants me i don't have to ask i don't have to anything if i'm invited i'm coming because i know god's got a word for that play right. and whatever but what i what i was telling the ladies last weekend was you know if god calls me into the fire i'm walking into the fire because i know he's protected me and he's equipped me to go in there and there's somebody in there or something in there he wants me to help or get pull out or do something right. and i love how you said you know if you mix the super it, it takes out the natural like i love how you said that that's so great but I love how you say it, it was like a mighty rushing wind that just came in, knocked you off your feet. But you had a praying mama. Right, I did. Come on. Mm -hmm. You parents out there right now need to hear that part, too, that when you are a praying mama, right. a praying dad, you, you pray for your kids that may be falling away or may be going the course that you That's don't right. want to go. You stand fervent in your prayers because you're praying. And your speaking right. connects to the believing, which then connects you to receiving. That's so right. we've got to make sure that in those moments where there's people we're praying for, we need to be continuing to pray because That's a right. praying mama knocked you off your feet because That's the Holy right. Spirit that she prayed for came in there. And they, you know, the God's like, I need to grab him now, but right. I grab him now. I got to do it now. And then the other thing that I love about it is the Ephesians 
one in three prayers, y'all. <laughs> you know, I, I, I heard the same thing. You know, you, Pastor Mark told us about Kenneth E. Hagin telling him at least once or probably more than once, you know, a day for six months, the Bible will become a different book to you. And uh, it's something that God's been stirring up on the inside of me that where I go, I'm like, hey, you need to you need to be speaking these prayers right. because you're like, I need to hear God or I want to know wisdom. This is the word that you right. pray over yourself that gives you, you're asking him, if you will give me, give me God, wisdom and revelation right. knowledge, you know? And so I too have been praying those prayers right. because no matter how mature we get and grow in the Lord, we are right. never done receiving never done. wisdom, no. revelation, knowledge. We never reach the capacity no. never we do. want to be filled to overflowing oh, oh, of wisdom and revelation, knowledge. So revelation. when we come in contact with the person that needs the Holy Spirit just flows it out exactly into our right. 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 You know, and the other thing that I like was Pastor Mark always says, you know, Jesus will stick with you till you get it. Right. All he needs yeah. is a hungry heart, someone saying, yes, Lord, you know, and show me and he can stick with you until you That's get it. All right. That's right. I like it. Right. I love this. You know, the same fire that you got is the same fire that I've got. That's and right. I just knew today, and I mean, things that you were even touching on was the things I was talking about earlier. You know, I just love how the spirit just moves throughout the body. Oh, live, where Where do you live? Monticello, Arkansas. All right. So I'm here in Missouri, and the same spirit of faith moved into you in Arkansas. We were saying spirit. the same things before we even got in the same place. <laughs> we're in God. agreement. That's it. Hallelujah. Yeah. We're in the same hotline. <laughs> yes, I mean, we are connected, eternally connected, blood connected. Yes, we, we are. are. We are blood brother and sister. I mean, we don't even got to poke ourselves. We already got right. Same day. Same daddy. And I love, mm -hmm. you, know, um, you know, whenever you give your life to the Lord, I mean, he just, I mean, it just, I can't even explain how great he is. And, and I, I mean, he's just so good. He and, is. Oh. Come on. Yes, Come Praise on. the Lord. You, know, you can grow in revelation knowledge. Yes. You can grow in revelation knowledge. Yes. Revelation is the most deadliest weapon. Yes. That's why the Apostle Paul was so harassed by the devil. That's why the Apostle Paul was bit by a snake left for dead. But he told King Agrippa, I think myself happy. Yes. What did he say? He should have been saying that. Come on. But Paul was so full of revelation. Yes. You know, he said in Galatians 1, which I have received, did not come from man, um, but it came from a revelation. Yeah. What is revelation? It is revealed knowledge. Yeah. It is inside information. Or Pastor Mark says, it is holy information. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. It's not just natural information. Come on. It's not just natural education. That could be good. But it is when the eyes of our heart, come on now, yeah. the interest of his word brings what? Light. 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 But the Hagin said, when faith comes, the light turns up. Whoa. Come on. It's like revelation. It's like when you read a scripture, and Brother Hagin said, I, I, I read the New Testament 150 times, mm -hmm. but I never saw in Mark 11, 23, yeah. that Jesus said, say three different yeah. times. What was that to Brother Hagin? A revelation. Yeah. That was a revelation. And what did Brother Hayes start doing? Started teaching on speak, the speaking part three times more than the believing part. Yeah. And he read the Bible 150 times. So we are slow learners. So yeah. We missed it a bunch. But the Holy Spirit would stick with you until you get it. it. Even Peter said, Lord, I don't know where everything, but you have the words to eternal life. Come on. And Peter was a slow learner. I mean, he has a lot of mess ups. I mean, he was a short, short bus. I mean, he denied the Lord and he said some bad words, could have made their off, but he preached the first Pentecostal sermon and 3,000 got saved. What was it? It wasn't just his preaching, it was his revelation. He was being filled and being filled again with the Holy Ghost. Something happens to you when the eyes of your heart. Yeah. The interest or the eye, not not natural eyes. Come on. No, the revelation affects your eyes. Oh, 
faith affects your ears. Yeah, faith kills by hearing, but revelation affects your eyes. Yeah. The eyes of your heart. Brother Hagin said that the spirit of seeing and knowing, which is the word of wisdom, word of knowledge, and discerning the spirit, which is the revelation gifts. Yeah. That's the things we're stepping into. Yeah. We're coming to a place of revelation. Yeah. That we're not even preach some dead code sermonette, but no, we have a revelation, a radical revolutionary revelation, and righteousness revealed from faith to faith. So revelation can affect your faith. You can grow in faith. You can have faith, but you can grow. For Paul said, from faith to faith. Yeah. So we can break barriers, but like the this, the every breakthrough in faith is a breakthrough in revelation knowledge. Yeah. So this is our prayer. Make, and make it make it personal. You put your name in there. Yeah. You put it, look, I'm praying. This is what I'm praying for. I don't want a car. I don't want a house. I don't want a jet. I don't need no money. I need the spirit of wisdom. Come on now. In revelation, in the knowledge of God, that the eyes of my heart will be flooded with light. That I may know the hope, number one, of us call it number two. What is the richness of the glory of his inheritance? Number three, and what is the exceedingly greatness of his power toward us? Come on now. Who believe? When he brought in Christ, when he raised him from the dead. So when Christ was raised from the dead, all power, he didn't give us a junior Holy Spirit. He gave us the same spirit. Come on now, my God from on high. The same Holy yes. Ghost, the yes. same anointing. That's why Jesus had to borrow a tomb. Yeah. You know, we got three days. I mean, he knew that. And the Holy Ghost raised him up and filled him and filled the church. Man, it's time for the church to be the church, yeah. the triumphant church. Yeah. And that's what we pray for the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Man, man, man. Praise the Lord. I mean, you get two people on fire for God, it's going to go. Like, it's going to. You get two people on fire for God in the same area. The fire is going to be so bright that people are going to be drawn to them. Right. You know, because when you got a spirit of faith, people see that and they're like, right. what is up with that person? Or what is up with her? What is up with it? Well, it's because I'm extra for the Lord. That's right. The Lord is extra for me. Absolutely. I have cool. a spirit of faith that what God has done for right. me, he can do for you. And even greater, he can do for you. <laughs> if you'll just step on up and say, right. Jesus, I choose you. And then he says, all right, now that you've chosen me, let's step into the refining. Let's step into the growth process. Let's step in so I can show you what my plan and purpose has been for you all along. So I can show you the life that I have ready for you, that I've had ready for you for a while. And then he sits there and then you start to grow up in the Lord. You start to get wisdom and revelation knowledge. And then you start to just feel it on the inside. You start to hear from him. You start to get the, what the word says. You start to get it. You start to believe it. You start to speak it. You start to stand on it. And then God says, all right, now that you've got up to the level that I needed you to, let's go out. It's time to go out. And God is calling all of us to a higher level. Our level. And the other thing is, is you better be prepared because you, if you're a strong warrior of the Lord, the devil's going to attack you on every side. Because if right. he can pick you off, if he can pick you off, he knows the amount of people that that's going to impact. So don't you dare allow the devil to pick you off. Uh-uh, no, no. But I love everything that you're saying because I I uh, I never did drugs or you know nothing like that. But the music, the rap, the you know those you know corn. I used to listen to corn and well, me too. You know, things like you know I used to do those things because that suited my mood at the time. I'd listen to whatever I was feeling yeah. and you know all those things. But what I found is there's music that I like that Christian music. I mean, That's right. Minister. minister is my favorite writer. Yeah. I love it. I, yeah. I, you know, he just speaks to me. And, but what I, I mean, you, your testimony alone, okay, is something that people can now see that they, they can get. Like, you don't have to go to the church to get it. You don't have, you know, like what you're saying is you were there and God just knocked you off your feet. Right. And this is what God is wanting to do today. Right. He's, this is what he's wanting to do. He's wanting to show up himself and be like, yes. like a Mack truck. And you say, what was that? And he says, it's me. Are you ready for what Great I job. You know, This is the Lord. I, I truly believe that. Just like we were saying with the mighty rushing wings and my prayer just came up. 
and a mighty rushing wind to the east, to the west, to the north, to the south, because he's wanting to blow people off their feet that may know a little bit about him, may have heard a little bit about yeah. him, but he's wanting to encounter them in a mighty way because he's coming and he wants it's, to yeah. it. Supernatural. That's right. That's right. Say that again, what you said about you got your super. Well, say that one more time. Well, I always say the anointing is when God puts his super on your natural. So the super is the anointing. Uh, yeah, the anointing it destroys the yoke and it removes a burden. It is the oil of joy. It's the anointing that that does the work. I mean, it's not our ability. Right. And uh, you have to mix faith with the anointing. You yeah. have to mix faith with it. You can receive the anointing just like salvation. Yeah. And many people in the church, Megan, can't receive. I mean, they can receive salvation, but any other thing, they're like, how do I get it? I mean, it is, you just kind of mix faith with it. It's yeah. just like healing. It's just like prosperity. It's just like anything in the Bible, you mix it with faith. And Hebrews said, Hebrews said that the people heard the gospel, but it was not mixed with faith. So you need to mix it with faith. And the Bible says when you're in faith, you're in rest. Yeah. I mean, when you're in faith, you're in rest. I mean, you're not fighting for victory. You're fighting from victory. Oh, so you're not trying to get it. Already got you already it. got it. Got it. He says, I got it before I get it. it. Come on, someone. He it. said, I got it. Yeah. Come on, before I get it. Yeah. Jesus said, what thing is forever you die when you pray? Believe that you what? have received them and you should have them i'm not trying to get it i already got it i'm not trying to get healed come on i'm not even i'm already healed isaiah says i were peter says i am i need the word i am i am i is healed he sent his word and he healed me come on and he redeemed me from all my destruction so i just take my medication three times a day by mouth and I just say, I am healed. And I just say, body, you're going to be fine. So get in line. Yeah, I just talk to it. Yeah, so yeah. the faith, you know, being in church, you know, we've heard faith, 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 but never learn how faith works. Yeah. Or, yeah. I mean, that's what they, we don't know how faith works. We know how have faith, have faith, have faith, pray, believe, 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 believe. We understand that part. Yeah. But how to relieve, or Robert said, you always having miracles coming to you or from you. Yeah, it is yeah. your job to take hold of it. Yeah. Right? What the woman issue of blood do? She could have said, Well, you know, he's too busy. Yeah. No, he could have said, Now Jesus is tired. Right. I mean, he's got a busy ministry. Right. You know, what did she say? She said what she believed. Yeah. Yeah. And she heard it and she believed it and she acted the yeah. thing out. And she said, you know what? I fish and go get to that man. And what did she say? She said, she could have said, I hope he can heal me. That don't work. No. And people in the church are saying them things and they're defeating themselves. Yeah. She, she said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, what'd you say? I don't know. Where did that come right. from, man? Right. She didn't go to Ramo. No. She heard of Jesus. Yeah. She heard the word, man. Yeah. And she said, if I can just get to him. And he stopped. He said, who touched me? Yeah. So said, Everybody touching you. No, -uh. somebody made some contact. Yeah. Meaning somebody turned the faith switch on. Yeah. Uh -uh. And, he, and she told the whole truth. So being in church all my life, I never knew how faith works yeah. until... Mark 11, 23, he said, whosoever shall have whatsoever, he says. Right. So faith works by speaking and by action. Yeah. Peter said, believe and you shall rejoice. Yeah. Now people say, I believe, I believe, but they're not rejoicing, not one bit. <laughs> like, <laughs> if you're believing is a verb, you are acting out, yes, come on now, come on. what I'm believing for. Yes. So yes. I believe that I have received it. I'm not trying to get it. I'm yeah. not coming to church for a breakthrough. Right. I've got the breakthrough in me. I am the breakthrough. I'm carrying the breakthrough. Yeah. I'm not coming to church, and it's good to come to church. You know, there is some still that require. You need to be in church, but I'm not coming to church just to let go of what I got. <laughs> you know, I got it. I have it. I take hold of it. Yeah. So we live by faith. I'm not an amateur. 
I'm a professional. I live by faith every single day. Amen. And that's something that I'm still learning because yeah. you know, we're never there yet. Yeah. So faith is released. The spirit of faith. I love how you say it. We had the same spirit of faith. Yes, we do. He said, I believe and therefore what? I speak. Yeah. So you hook up your speaker to your believer. Unhook your 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 wire and says, I don't know if it's ever going to happen. You, I don't know if it's ever going to work out. The economy don't look. Unhook all of the, and, and you may have to delete some people in your life. Come on now. Come on. You can't hang around a bunch of buzzards and you know, walk around. You can hang around Thomas's and Neal. You can hang around them, baby. <laughs> Joshua and Taylor was 80 years old. They said, I don't want to retire and check. I won't give me the mountain. I want to, we're well able to overcome the land. Faith yeah. works by speaking. And a lot of people are saying the wrong yeah. things. And it's not even the devil. It's just their, their own self. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Their own self. Yeah. That's the part that we, I mean, that's the part that we miss. And that's not a part that I was ever taught whenever, when I first gave my life back to the Lord on the swing, like my testimony, you know, when I was ready to end my life and I had given my life to the Lord at 18, but there wasn't any teaching. So I had no idea. And when I was reading it, I was getting frustrated because I didn't understand. And of course I started at the beginning. And so I just was like, whatever, I'm just going to play back. And you know, that life, wasn't what it what should have been and then whenever i was going to end my life on the swing and jesus showed up and you know he said to me he goes you might be done but i'm not if you'll choose me i'll give you the life that i've intended for you all along right. and i'm like i'm in so i got in and i started you know just doing asking praying and and i got in a church but i wasn't learned like i i, I wasn't really learning i wasn't really learning anything right. because i wasn't being taught how to put my faith into action right. i knew how to believe for things but then god if it's your will God, you, you know, get your wheel right. and all that, you know, that's what I was taught. And then I got into a new church and that's too long after that. I met Pastor Mark and Trina Aikens right. and they showed up and we took everything we had, all the money that we had to pay our rent and our food, you know, everything we went because we knew we needed to go listen to them some more because right. they had something that we need. Right. And that's the right. thing that everybody misses. You have faith to believe. You can believe all you want to believe, but are you going to put your faith into action? Yes. Faith without Trump. corresponding action is what? Dead. 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 You're not going to go anywhere. It's dead. When something's dead, it's it's dead. dead. you walk over to it, you kick it, it's not going to do anything. It's dead. dead. So, it's dead. You've got to put action behind the words. you got to put action behind what you believe. Right. It's just, I've noticed, I mean, and I, I'm, I'm so strong in it too, where I'm like, you can't just say it and say it and say it. You, It's got to be connected to your heart. Your right. believers. Also, believe action and power behind the words that you say and you right. stand on what you say you don't waver from it you don't put left right, right. You do that. You no wavering light fasten on the promises praise the lord believe in what you say and you walk in walking walk that's right that's right god god gave me this i think a year ago where he said you know you hear the slogan you can talk the talk can you walk the walk mm -hmm. okay can you walk the talk walk the talk Walking is the action behind what you're saying. You've got to believe it. You've got to show it. You've got to say it. When people see me, they're going to see me in action. That's right, in action. I'm in action. See me in action, believing and standing on the promises of God, no matter what people are saying here or saying here or saying here. They're going to see me head up, shoulders back, because that's our position in Christ. And they're going to see me walking what I say, speaking. and I mean, they're going to see Jesus. Yeah. That's my whole thing. So I, is for everyone to see Jesus in me and me to rise people up into who Christ has raised them to be and to walk the talk, not just say walk it, the talk. Yeah. The the right. No wavering no allowed. No wavering. No. Wavering. no. Wavering. no. Wavering. There's no place there. Right. Even if failure, even if failure is on every corner, yeah. hold fast to your contention of faith without wavering. Yeah. But he is faithful. Come on. That promised it. Yeah. And people say, well, I don't want to lie. You ain't lying. Confession is just agreeing with God. Yeah. You're just yeah. saying what the word is saying. Come on. You're not saying what the world is saying. Come on. Come on. You're not saying what the news is Come saying. On. You're not saying, well, you know, it's a shortage on money. Not for me, it ain't. Yeah. Not for you, it ain't. Because our faith is in God. That's right. And Jesus said, have faith in God. Yeah. He did not say have faith in God in church right. because oh, 
in church, God can do about anything in church. I mean, hey, in church, he's Jehovah Jireh. At the moment we get home, we're like, I don't know what's going to happen no more. Like, what happened to you? Jesus said, faithful work for whosoever. Yeah. You ain't got to be a preacher. You ain't got to be a whosoever. You got to be somebody that's in Christ. Yeah. So can you ever see a faithful work in church? It works any on for whosoever, and it works on whatsoever you say. So it can work for your back. It can work for your money. It can work for your kids. It can have faith. For, we have faith for salvation, but we stop. Come on. But we don't stop it. That's just the beginning. We have faith for healing, faith for blessing, the faithful family, faith for anything you have. You put your faith to work. Your faith is a servant for you. Your faith works for you. You don't work. You let your faith do the work. Come on now. You put your faith out there and you believe it and you speak and you act on what you're saying. You just act like the Bible is true. And we know the Bible is true. We just act like he said, I'm more than a conqueror. So I think I'll act like I'm more than a conqueror. Right. You know? That's what he said. Yeah. So we act though. People are like, well, you know, I'm not in that word of faith. Well, I'm not in the word of doubt. Come on now. I'm not in the word of unbelief. Come on. Paul, Paul is the one who said the word of faith is in your mouth mm-hmm. and even in your heart. Amen. So why did he say mouth then heart? Because the more you say it, the more it gets in you. The more, what it got go to Joshua, meditate in my word day and night. What do you say? Meditate in my word. What's that mean? To go over and over and over and over and to observe to do it. So we put our faith in God, yeah. not in nobody else, not in our social security check, our retirement, our world, our governor, our president. Thank God for all of them. A mouth when you God. Hallelujah. Oh my God. Yes. Well, when you work the word, the word will work for you. That's right. Then, That's right. Like Pastor Mark always says, you know, when you speak the word, God makes himself responsible for your result. Your result. That's right. You got to believe it to speak it. That's right. You're not just going to throw. I mean, I know some people do, but as Christians, you know, you're going to say what the word says because you know that there's power to back power. it up. Power in that word. So you know, just like you said, you're going to count it joy, one joy, two joy, three joy, four joy. And even if you don't feel like it, that's right. the time you better do it anyway. Do it anyway. Do it anyway. Do you it show anyway. up anyway. Anyway. Anyway, glory to God. Man, what Praise a good word. Hallelujah. So yeah. I've been here like, okay, something's in our future where we're together, <laughs> sitting together, because we're just got, we could piggyback off each oh, other. Like, <laughs> Of faith and fire, glory and to God. Right. Faith and fire, that's it. That's I'm it. So glad that you said yes. I mean, I your name had been stirring in my heart for a while, and you know, God had been telling me, "You need to get some men. You need to get some more men." And I'm like, "I know I do. I'm trying to find some men to come on here because uh, God told me in January He wants ordinary, everyday people to show up, and uh, so people can see that God works in ordinary, everyday people all the time." Right. You don't have to have a name for yourself. You don't have to be, you know, one of those preachers on TV. You don't have no. to do those things. No. God wanted everybody to see that he works in anybody and everybody that will show up and say, yes, That's right. I want you. That's right. And it's that simple. Just showing up and say, I choose you, Lord. I choose you. Choose and I you. love it. And um, God just said, I don't want the heavy hitters. I want the ones that Nobody knows, so they everybody can see I work in anybody and everybody. That's right. That's true, man. And I'm so excited. I mean, I'm so excited for what God's going to do with you and what he's doing in you and what the future that is ahead for you. I know it's something big. I know it's something powerful. And, and, uh, you know, I just love, I love your enthusiasm and your personality because it rubs right with mine. You know, I love it. You know, we got to have fun. We got to, we got to be you know, God said, if you're not excited about what I've done, nobody's going to want what I have. Nobody's going to want it. That's right. So That's right. Not, you cannot walk in a place and be like, God loves you. He's for you, not against you. That right? That's right. Who who wants that? That? He wants that more. Keep that down the road because that ain't faith. I don't want none of that. I don't want that. 
I want the ones that are excited. I want the ones that are going to talk about what the Lord has done to change the lives of other people. That's what I want because that's what I'm all about. I'm asking for the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Me too. Praise God. No, you're extra for the Lord. <laughs> extra, extra. We want the extra. Hey, like, are, you coming, are, are you coming to camp meeting, Megan? I am. Yes, I am. I am. I'll be. I'll be there. Uh, I'll, I'll probably be working, but you know what? We'll we'll see each other. We'll see each other. I, I, I'm going to be licensed and ordained. You are. Yeah. yeah. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I will be there for that. I, I will, we're going to be there. Yes, we will. I wouldn't miss it. I wouldn't. Miss it. What an honor. I mean, I love you. I love, mm -hmm. I mean, I love you. Love your family. Love your ministry. Um, and, um, man, I just, I just see growth and growth. I don't know what it is, but I just keep hearing growth for you. I see abundance for you, which I know you already know. I see, um, I just, I don't know. I just see an expansion. I don't know what you're believing mm -hmm. for. I don't know. You'll know, but I, I just keep hearing expansion, growth. Um, and one thing Miss Hannah said to me last, this weekend she says higher level or new levels new devils so guess right. what we're about to we're about to put the big devil this right. come on uh, yes, we, are. We, we, we can handle them. Them. <laughs> we uh, now we ain't messing with the little devils we're messing with the ones that try to wreck havoc but guess what we're gonna turn it flip the script and, uh, and then back to hell where they came from that's exactly right that's it Praise the Lord. Lord. Well, I love you. And um, is there anything else that you'd like to share? You want to share your ministry or share how people can get in touch with you? Um, or if they want to give into your ministry, would you like to share that? Okay. Well, the, uh, I will go anywhere. They can just inbox me on my Facebook page, yeah. uh, Delton Gladden. And if you want to sow, it's cash, it's money sign, uh, Delton Gladden. I'm a cash out. Oh, so yeah. uh, I go to youth groups, any, any opportunity. Uh, share share my testimony or revival or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. uh, just shoot me an inbox or you can get my number off somewhere, and uh, I'm I'm always ready. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, we're like a race. This is what I said about me. I'm like a racehorse at the gate, ready for the gate to open, so I can go. That's right. And I can see the little line of a champion. That's right. <laughs> Praise God. Well, uh, same for me. If y'all, I mean, if you guys want me to come to your church, same thing. I like you said, I don't charge anything. I just come because I know that's what God laid on my heart. You know, right. so I'll preach anywhere, anyone, anything. Right. It does not matter. I'll raise it from the dead. I don't care what it is. Like right. I have a powerful spirit of faith that I believe God and God provides my every need <laughs> because I live according right. to his purpose. So praise God. So praise up. Thank you, Megan. Anytime you are welcome, and I would just like for you, if you wouldn't mind, just uh, close this in prayer. All right, Father, we thank you for the Holy Ghost. We thank you for the blood of Jesus, and I thank you for Megan. And I just speak blessings upon her ministry. Whoo, my gosh! Hold on, Megan. I just see doors are about to open up for you, and uh, you have seen only in a measure. Ha uh ha. -huh. You've only seen a measure, the Lord is saying, but you have been faithful in the measure, but he is taking you to another place. Ha ha. It will be, oh, it's going to be many doors open up. Your voice will be heard. Faith will be released. Women will be healed. Women will be restored. Lives will be changed. The glory be revealed because you have been obedient in the faithful, in the small. God is about to release you into the supernatural. Woo! Super. I hear the word, Megan. A release is coming. A release. God is about to release you into the doors that you have never even thought thought about whoop my little my shit go both I'm not that there's you're gonna go Megan all over the United States and you get your, your calendar out and you're you I'm telling you <laughs> he's about to bless you supernaturally I speak supernatural blessings over you supernatural increases and thank you father for every door you open that your word would have free course and your word would go forth in Jesus will be glorified. Bless her husband. Bless her kids. In Jesus' name, amen. And Jesus is Lord. God bless you. Amen. amen. And I want to say this when I was
pray and I see you stretching like a rubber band. And this were this you being ordained and getting the double triple portion. Right. This stretching is going into the enlargement and the things that God has put before you. Like you were saying with new doors, there is a big door that you've been standing in front of questioning whether this is the one that I should take or not. And God right. is saying it's time to step in. It's time to step Great in. Door, because the rubber band when it stretches. And he gets you stretched because I see, I see a uh, big conferences, not just a one day thing, not just a two day thing. I'm talking, he's stretching you. Right. And so when he gets you stretched, then what, what happens when a rubber band gets stretched? Come on. Right. Release. Come on. You're going to be released that... into the other things that God's been stirring in your heart. So I know that it's big. I know it's powerful. I know it's enlargement. And I know financial blessings are coming above you could ever think or imagine. Right and forward. I speak that over you right now in the name and blood of Jesus. I bind the devil's attacks that tries to come and take that away from you. It tries to make you think it's not coming. It's coming. It's yours. Yes, you it is. Got it. You got it. I got it. It's yours. Got it. Hallelujah. I thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hey, glory to thank God. Glory to God. Well, we love you. God bless you all. Thank you so much for joining us. Like we said before. If you are a new believer, please reach out to me or, or Pastor Delton. I have some things I'll send out to you. It's Spirit of Faith or, or In Christ book to get you powered up to do what you are. You know, you don't identify with anything else. And uh, if you need prayer or anything, I know I'm here for you. I mean that when I say that. I know Pastor Delton is as well. Just reach out to us on Facebook and we will be happy to help you. So God bless you. I wish you, Megan. Stand in faith. Hello. See you soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us for the Faith and Fire podcast with Megan Fortner. We look forward to having you again next week on YouTube or your favorite podcast platform. Each episode comes from a live conversation Megan will have with folks that have a story to tell pointing to the faith and fire that only comes from Jesus. Share it with your friends and we'll see you next time on Faith and Fire with Megan Fortner.